It is August 1st. I'm here with Rodney, and we're just going to do a short video summarizing Tesla's Q2 earnings uh, discussion from the perspective of uh, raw material uh, commentary, in particular, uh, lithium, cobalt, and nickel. Rodney, your thoughts? Some interesting commentary. I saw Elon had a ding at Apple about how much cobalt is in their batteries. Um, as you know, a phone is about four grams, I think, and a car probably about two kilos. So that's an interesting one. But Cobalt is more, far more sustainably mined these days. And if I can remember correctly, the LME has a full blockchain on where it comes from. And then you've got companies like First Cobalt, Javar, Cobalt Blue that are outside the DRC looking, you know, clean cobalt, uh, you know, in the States or Canada or, or um, in, in Australia. At the same time, he, he mentioned, you know, that iron is far more abundant than nickel and cobalt and the shift looking now potentially at two thirds, one third LFP high nickel. Um, I'd be very interested to see the carbon footprint of how much CO2 goes into an, an LFP battery cell made in China by CATL and delivered to Tesla. I'd fancy that has a substantially higher carbon footprint than what's planned for in Europe. And certainly people are targeting obviously carbon neutral like um, Northvolt. So uh, I wait to see that from the perspective of using it, it makes sense. There is a limited availability of those materials and uh, it is a big change from already last year, September when he was talking about LFP and then mid nickel with manganese and then high nickel for the high spec end. It seems like the nickel manganese is being shifted out. Um, clearly, nickel is a pinch point and possibly hydroxide as well. Uh, we shall see how it goes. I think you, you go with what you can get, play a bit of Tetris, and um, I guess LFP cells are more available for now. As I say, it does come, I think, with. Um, a higher carbon footprint, but it's certainly cheap and available. And I think that Tesla is going to look to use China as a production center and a shipping center that can work until Europe sort of brings in its tougher legislation. So we shall see. The 4680 looks to be a high nickel. They've still got a way to go, last 10% before they ramp, hoping to hit 100 gigawatt hours, most likely as a run rate annualized at the end of 2022 rather than the full year. They're launching the semi and the cyber. I do think the cyber will come first and obviously Model Y in Austin and Germany, they are going to need high nickel. I think the semi, given the size of the battery pack and the price, the margins aren't, aren't sufficient enough to warrant redirecting high nickel sells to that. So I think they'll put a few prototypes or deliver some orders in and then probably throttle back until they have availability. Rodney, you and I have been uh, very much proponents of uh, what we're calling the hydroxide surge. In particular, you know, hydroxide growing much faster, but in particular outside of China. So the growth is e even more so there and hydroxide having a, a premium price Ex China. So, does Elon Musk's comments on this two third, one third change your view at all? This is a change of mind from less than a year ago. So, I think that if we see advancements in high nickel cathode chemistry and availability of nickel and cobalt and so on, um, then, uh, you know, if the cost and performance balance shifts back in that favor, then you might see it shift back. I still see the US going. The high nickel route I had adjusted previously, um, given that uh, you know that carbonate has done very well, or LFP by you know uh, using carbonate. Um, so originally I had 2024 as my um, year in which battery grade hydroxide would would have bigger demand than carbonate. That's moved to 2025. Um, but again, it depends. There's a lot of sort of a, is a binomial tree of, of how the EV market shakes out. Um, as you know, Albemol had 60% hydroxide in 2025, and that's total. Mine is, is, is uh, not, not that. I, I have um, sort of balanced or possibly even carbon it slightly ahead in 2025, but in battery grade demand, 
somewhere between 50 to 55 percent hydroxide in 2025 and it depends it's based a lot on the assumption i made that the us would have generous subsidies and evs ev sales would take off in that market 